Ah, megahertz displays from back in the day. The best feature of a vintage case. They usually come in two flavors, with two and three digits. And when you press the turbo button, it changes. But I always remembered what a pain it was to configure them correctly. Here's why. The back is full of pins and jumpers and some cryptic numbers and letters. So in this video we're going to look into exactly how they work and how to configure them. Ok, let's start from the basics. How do we power it on? Well, there is this single row header where two of the pins are marked with plus and minus. These provide 5 volts to the display. So let's connect them to the power supply. And yeah, the display lights up just fine. Now what about the rest of the pins in this header? The three pins in the middle are for the turbo switch. The turbo switch is a two-way switch. The center pin connects to either the pin on the left or the pin on the right, depending on whether turbo is on or off. Finally, the last two pins are for the turbo LED. This lights up when turbo is on. Let's try it out. Yeah, it works as expected. When the turbo switch is in the on position, then the turbo LED lights up. What about those pins at the top? Well, these control when each segment of the 7 segment display should light up. The top two rows are for the first digit and the other two are for the second. Let's take a closer look. The pins are marked with numbers for 1 to 3 and letters from A to G. Each letter corresponds to a single segment of the 7 segment display. Segment A is at the top, B right next to it on the right hand side, C right below B and so on. Segment G is the one in the middle. Each segment has a corresponding pin in the pin header. For example, segment A corresponds to pin A which is the second pin counting from the top left. Now let's look at the numbers. 1 is for the normal non-turbo mode. 2 is for turbo mode and 3 is for always on. So if we bridge pins A and 3 with a jumper, then segment A should light up regardless of the position of the turbo switch. Similarly, if we move the jumper to position A1, Segment A should light up only when turbo is off. Finally, in position A2, the segment should light up only when turbo is on. A similar pattern repeats across the header. Each pin that corresponds to a segment, along with its neighboring pins, forms a shape of a T or an inverted T. A jumper can be placed across any of the three possible positions. The second digit uses a similar but inverted pattern. Finally, the three digit displays usually have one extra letter, letter H, to control both segments that make up the one. And you can either connect it to two or three or leave it off. Ok, now let's look at an example. Let's say we want the first digit to show three when turbo is off and six when turbo is on. Let's look at all segments one by one. Segment A is on in normal, non-turbo mode, but is also on in turbo. So regardless of the position of the turbo switch, segment A is always on. Therefore pin A should be connected to the always on pin, that is pin 3. Now let's consider segment B. B is on in normal mode, but off in turbo mode. So we need to connect it to pin 1. Segment C is always on. So we connect it to pin 3. Same for segment D. Segment E is only on in turbo mode, so we connect it to pin 2. Same for segment F. And finally segment G is always on, so we connect it to pin 3. If a segment is off for both normal and turbo mode, then we don't connect it to any pins. Now let's check whether this is correct using the actual display. And yes, the first digit is 3 when turbo is off and 6 when it's on. 
Well, that's all for today. A great resource for these types of displays is minus zero degrees dot net. It includes diagrams and photos for many different types of displays. And as always, thanks for watching and goodbye.